entertaining weather podcast on your listening device. We are the Stormfront Freaks podcast. Thank you for listening. This is episode 16, and our guest will be forensic meteorologist and president of Weather Extreme Limited, Dr. Elizabeth Austin. Uh, we're also going to have some fun discussing why no one knows where they live and they can't seem to identify themselves within a warning polygon. Uh, we're going to have to talk a little bit about that. And then at the end of the show, we're also going to share some exciting updates coming up to season 2.0 and talk about our upcoming guest list. So you're going to want to catch that as well, uh, what's coming up in 2017. But first, let's go ahead and say hi to the team and uh, let's find out what everyone's drinking. MJ, let's start with you. All right, today I have a uh, fine brew from New Holland Brewery Brewing Company in uh, Holland, Michigan, called Dragon's Milk. It's referred to as a bourbon barrel aged stout, and uh, Ooh, it, that sounds uh, deadly. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's very good. It's very different, but uh, that uh, bourbon barrel aged taste you certainly get, and it's uh, pretty tasty. Does it have an alcohol content percentage listed anywhere on there? Eleven percent. Yeah, I figured that's going to be potent. <laughs> All right, Maz. Maz, you got something better than milk tonight, or are we still on the uh, the cow train? No, I didn't have any cookies tonight, so thus the milk <laughs> is gone. No, in honor of my impending oil change, Guinness Draft. Just saying. <laughs> Aha. If you're now low is, on is your that, 30, you know. Is that your oil change, or is that your vehicle's oil change? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good answer. Jen, uh, Jen, Jen, what do you got tonight, if I should ask? A refreshing glass of water, actually, oh. from my tap. Yeah, it's trying to stay hydrated, you know. It's oh, a little dry, crazy. you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. a lot of Christmas it's parties. It's a Sam Adams tap. <laughs> Sam Adams water? Sam Adams glass, it is, yeah. It is. It's, it's a Sam Adams glass, so I'm joining in on the fun, but it's it's water. It's refreshing and delicious. Okay. But I also have a LaCroix on standby. Oh, very good. <laughs> We're still going okay. for that sponsorship. <laughs> double fisting it, double fisting it tonight. All right, and we will ask our guest, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Austin. Elizabeth, uh, you got something tonight? Well, I, I'd like to take what MJ has, but I'm in the office still, so I just have a, a <laughs> hot tea. <laughs> very good. Very so nice. because of your well, location, you, you can't have something harder than a hot tea? Is that why? Oh. Uh, no, I can. It's just I was working up until the time of the show, so I didn't get a chance. <laughs> well, when we take our first break, feel free to to help yourself on that. Okay. Um, let's do. Uh, I, w- I want to do a little listener update. Episode fifteen, which was our last episode with Tom Nizzle, it set our twenty four hour download record. So I want to uh, thank everybody yes. that made yeah. that happen. That was uh, crazy, amazing. We're setting a lot of records yes. right now, and. We've also now reached downloads in all 50 states. Thank, so we you, to our list- got- Thank, you. Thank you to our listener in Wyoming. That was yes, the last we, one. Finally, <laughs> we finally got someone in Wyoming um, to, to cross the border, I guess, maybe to, to download. And we are, have downloads now in over 33 countries. So That's things great. are moving. Uh, yeah, we're excited. We, we, figured Maz, we figured Maz has to start picking up a new language here soon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speak English. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You don't. Uh, I also want to recommend everybody about uh, let them know about Stormfront Freaks Raw. We've basically posted the video version of our show with the breaks and everything you don't hear or see on our edited podcast. And now that that does include possible unedited language. So just kind of get, get let you know it's a PG-13 version. But episodes 14, 15 and 16 are available if you go to our, our webpage, stormfrontfreaks.com, uh, you'll find the links to the YouTube channel that has all. Well, we just yeah. lost Phil, so we'll uh, edit that uh, when he gets back. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We can fill in for him. I have, I have the script, but in mid-sentence, I wasn't sure I could pick it up from there and run. And I don't, I don't know who the Stop. winner of the, uh, I don't know who the winner of the, uh, preparedness kit is and that's what's next on the agenda so oh, nice. we'll have to wait for him to come back <laughs> just saying Maz, no. your sound is still breaking up a little bit okay yeah, yeah. that's okay How about now and this, this well, that's, that's good a no. bit with technology sometimes you get kicked off oh hey 
He's back. Yeah, I'm we back. Do. I think He's it back. We just like said... it was a good cut. We had, yeah, yeah, we'll add it. It was pretty close. You were just. And that's the show. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good cut. Um, uh, why we drink. That's exactly why. Yeah. All right. Let's keep her going. All right. That's why we're uh, going to test something new at the end of this. Uh, we'll go in three, two, one. <laughs> And the other thing we want to do, it's now time to give away the Red Cross Emergency Preparedness Kit that we have had uh, for the yeah. last three weeks. We've had a, it's, it's been a social media giveaway that we've done on Twitter and yes. Facebook. Our episode cool. number 14 was, uh, we talked a little bit about some weather products as we were getting ready for the, the holiday shopping season and everything. And so one of the things that we were going to give away was this uh, Red Cross Emergency Preparedness Kit. It's really a backpack. And I'll share what, what, what all is in this thing. Uh, battery-powered flashlight, two D-cell batteries, portfolio first aid kit, 2,400-calorie food bar, comfort kit, breathing yeah. mask, rain poncho, duct tape that everyone Always needs. Need that. Always need that. <laughs> Four water rations or, or water pouches. And if you want to know what that is, I... I Swear to God, you got to watch Stormfront watch Freaks Raw, uh, episode 14, and watch Brady try and drink <laughs> from his water pouch uh, and comment about the, you know, it was hilarious. Uh, there's one water container. There is a peeless whistle, which, again, if you want to see how that works or doesn't work, watch the episode watch and Brady. watch Brady. Yep. Two hand sanitizers, six moist towelettes. And uh, an Eaton hand crank weather radio awesome. uh, is all in this thing. This is 99 bucks. But anyway, so we ran a contest on Twitter and Facebook to give this bad boy away. And uh, we are going to go ahead and give this away right now. I've got a uh, – you can, you can get these cool randomizers on your, your phone. It's an app. And I entered everybody in. We had like 60, 60 people eligible to qualify. Nice. Uh, so give me a drum roll, everybody. Uh, uh, uh. Hey. <laughs> That's perfect Christmas vacation drum roll. Our winner is, uh, it's a Twitter address. It's at Matt8126. Woo! All right. At, at Matt8126. At Matt8126 is our winner. So congratulations, <laughs> at Matt. Uh, we will get you uh, your... Your pack, and we'll try and send that out to you here before Christmas. So, congratulations! Congratulations! All right. So, without further ado, let's get to uh, what we're all here for to begin with, which is our guest. And Jen, I will go ahead and let you take it over. So, we have the amazing Dr. Elizabeth Austin here. She is a world-renowned atmospheric physicist and the founder and president of Weather Extreme Limited. She is one of the foremost experts on the worldwide impact of weather and extreme weather, and she is also regarded as one of the world's leading forensic meteorologists. And Elizabeth's expert witness experience includes civil and criminal cases, state and federal actions in the U.S. and worldwide. She is also the author of Treading on Thin Air, and she is the chief scientist meteorologist for the groundbreaking and record-breaking Perlin Project, or Perlan Project, which we are going to ask her about. But uh, Elizabeth, we're going to call you Elizabeth, um, how did you get your start, especially in forensic meteorology? I think that's so interesting, very interesting. You know, that's one of the most common questions I get. And I was in graduate school at the University of Nevada, Reno, but most of my time was at the Desert Research Institute. Us. And did we lose Elizabeth? I think we maybe did. Uh, she's uh, she's froze. Um, yeah, she's gone. She'll be back. Can you guys hear me okay? We can start. Yeah, yeah we can hear I you. Can. Matt, Matt, why don't you talk for issues. a minute here? Yeah, talk. What's hey. that? Hey, I was going to say, what state is she in? She's in, I think, Reno or, or Nevada, I believe. That's why she's. Okay. Well, she's I, know, I, know she's, I know she's on Pacific time. But Maz, Maz, you're still a little hit and miss, just so you know. But just keep talking. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, sometimes you're perfect. And sometimes it's really, like, really muffled and bad. Yeah. So. Hey, Jen. Find some higher altitude. Uh, yeah. Jen, did you get your uh, package today? 
I did. I did. Cool. I oh, can't. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't opened it yet. I've got family okay. in town, so that's okay. why I'm like totally not in my normal setting. I'm in a bedroom. I'm on my bed. Okay. Just hanging out my PJs. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, thank you. Good. Right, I, I thought it was shirts. supposed to get to you today, so that's good. Yeah, thank you so much, Phil. We're gonna wear the shirts and tweet about it. <laughs> cool. Plastered I haven't I haven't seen her start trying to call back yet, so I'm oh I'm yeah, I didn't like okay. That's okay. I'm sure she will. She's already mad at us, right? Yeah, maybe. Um, Phil, how did you get her on here? Like she is amazing. Her I saw. I just I saw that she had a book out, and I thought, yeah. well, she she might be interested in talking, and so I I reached out to her, and then okay. um, yeah. And she said, sure. And uh, then, then she got me in touch with her publisher. And, that was so crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, just, you know, most, most all these guests are just, I just ask, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all you got to do is ask. And, and most all, I would say 95% of them have all been more than willing to Elizabeth when, is calling me. So hold on. I was going to say, well, yeah. So while he's yeah, talking, like, Jen, when, I'll wait till I'm done. Where's Maz going? I think it's a great question. <laughs> On an trying to get Oh, did did you um did you just try and close out a Google Chrome and start it up again? Uh, me? And it still didn't work, huh? Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. That's all right. Do you, do you want me to give you yeah, the phone and, number so you can call in? Well, and you froze too. And so we kind of paused for a second and waited because sometimes it's just a momentary thing. And But you didn't come back. So that's fine. We just, we edit this little piece out and we'll get back to, uh, probably what we'll we'll do is have Jen just ask the question. Yeah. Again, and we'll start from there. But this, th- yeah, this happens. You know, and the funny thing is, is I listened to, you were on Weather Brains uh, a few months back. And I happened to, I wanted to listen to that too when I saw that you were on. And I noticed that same thing happened. (laughs) Just it happens to to everybody that that does this. So, so yeah, go ahead and. I think Dana could have still stayed up for us. With us. I think so too. I don't know why. <laughs> you're in it's Reno, Brady right? Is that where you're at? Bra- Brady's at Star Wars. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, we don't know that. For I sure. am. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Nice tree behind you, Maz. Thank you very much. Oh my God, you're better than signal. me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a Christmas tree up yet. You, you know, I, I have to. I have to say, your 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 sound, Jen, is a lot better the closer you are to the microphone. Just so you know. Oh, okay. That, are you being dead serious? No, I'm being dead <laughs> serious. I'm being we're, serious. We're Absolutely. fine. You, you take Absolutely. your time. I mean, we're we're Love here. It. We're here. You're our guest, so we'll we'll wait for you. No problem. Well, that. That's why I kind of lean into, not that it makes me sound any better because it doesn't, but that's why I lean <laughs> into happens. this microphone. Well, hey, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you this. Since you I have it set to the right of my we had, uh, computer. So, so we're, we're officially a bi weekly podcast. It's just we're a little really more echoey. Every two weeks. It's further away from you, that's all. And not weekly. Yeah. Good call. And we had had, uh, so it would have been two weeks ago, we were scheduled to have Tom Nizzle on the show. And we had technical issues with the whole uh, recording system that we use and the video conferencing system that we use. And apparently uh, the whole system was down statewide and there was just nothing we could do about it. And so we, we had to totally scrap the show for the first time ever. And we had to go a week later. And fortunately Tom was willing to do that. So this happens. That's part of, of trying to do these, uh, group conference connections <laughs> trying to see if i don't think phil can hear me right now uh, uh we can have her call in by phone 
If if it doesn't work, we can also, uh, MJ mentioned, we can always have you call in by phone. There's a phone number. If you want to call in, you could do that too. But, but I'll certainly, get that. Uh, yeah, if you, if you see if you can get your Wi-Fi up. But if not, that that's a, it's another option. Or use her cell phone. Do you have a, um, do you have an Android or an iPhone? Okay. Yeah, a regular phone will work. I just, there, there's also a way, if, if you had an Android, because that uses Google as well, um, you could, you could, that's what Maz is doing. You could actually go into your browser and do the same thing. But if you have an iPhone like I do, that, that, that doesn't work. And you can hear how good I sound, right? Really, nothing. Deadpan. <laughs> I <don't see> it. <laughs> wow, it's just crickets. <laughs> you sound great. <laughs> Maz, you're too cool. I'm glad you don't Thank have you. to wake up at one thirty in the morning anymore. And I don't miss those. You saw that little that little I, remark? I did. I um I did that for about two years, the morning show, and then there was like a five week period where I okay. had to produce you want to you want to just go ahead and call in. You want to try that channel? And um, it was brutal. I, I had to be at work at one a.m. and so I had to wake up at like midnight, and it was just rough. I once worked at a place that was a two-person weather team, and one of them went on a three-week. <laughs> Make sure it's How nothing important. If, if it's the fire alarm, Nine get out. <laughs> you can call it later. That's so nuts. I don't know how you pulled that off. Like, I did all the... You just cross off the calendar. Just every day, you're like, one more down. I, um, so I did, um, for two days, I did, like, all the weather shows because my chief meteorologist was sick. Um, and I don't even know what the reasoning was. Maybe someone else was on vacation. And, like, literally, those two days were so crazy. Like, and I realized drinking water is I, I couldn't even drink caffeine because my body was like, what's going on, Jen? Like, we're not sleeping well. We're not doing anything, uh, you know? Yeah, if you want to do that, or if, I mean, you could me. call in from like a phone. Crazy. I mean, if you've got a regular so landline, you could do that, too. It <laughs> um, would be the same. It's, it's up to you. Yeah, it's, it's wild. I kind of okay. like not being so, yeah, so you anymore. could do that with your phone. That's fine. <laughs> For that and reason. And then just, uh, yeah, if you want to plug your headphones in, that'll work. That's the most stylish microphone so you don't I've ever have to seen. keep it to your ear. That would be more yes, comfortable. Man. Let me uh, let me get the MJ. Do you have the got it. phone number? Uh, my husband. I put it, it in the chat. I put it in the chat. Okay, got it. And then there's a code, a long right code you have to enter. But okay, it's uh, eight five five six nine three zero two eight eight, and then the passcode is three five. Two two three six five four nine pound. Long, sorry. Yes. <clears throat> Try that. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. Your Wi-Fi croak. Yeah, she. It sounds like she lost lost everything. It's. She said it seemed like it was there, but the the wife seemed like the Wi-Fi was gone. She said they had power. They're getting storms right now. Um, oh yeah, but um, the are drawing more power. <laughs> she so said Reno, right? in. Uh, she said Reno Tahoe. Okay, of course I don't know my geography in that area to know what that means. But we'll, we'll be talking about that later on the show. That's right. Well, but it's not my local <laughs> geography, so that's not my responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold there. It's like 49 with rain. Oh, burr. It's warm. Sorry. That's, just, that's, true. It, that's, warm. that's like tropical. It's five <laughs> below true. here right now. So, uh, How are you guys dealing with that? Like how? I'm, I'm inside a warm house. <laughs> <laughs> Shelter. <laughs> oh, Maz, it's too bad. I can't hear you, Maz. No, I know. We're missing out. We're missing you again, okay. buddy. Right. You, you got to get that fixed. Hey, hi. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi. 
geez, I can't believe this. It's terrible. But you know what? We're having a horrific storm today. So. Yeah. Hey, at least you're getting rain. That's a good it thing. It happens. That is hey, a good thing. I know. Hey, Jen, you, um, are you you're are you keeping your microphone stationary? Because I when you move it, and I can move hear that. As much as I can. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm going to keep it stationary. Is <laughs> she talking about the bathroom? I don't know. Are you talking like in you space? Are. You're at the space station. Good luck on re-entry, man. Good luck on re-entry. That's right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what, Maz? You could, if you wanted yes. to, you could you could just call in on the phone too. Yeah, you might want to do that. You might want to do that because we just don't hear you real well. What's the phone uh, number again? It's, okay, it is eight five five six nine three six nine three zero two eight eight zero two eight eight, and then passcode three five two two three six two three six. Five four nine pound. Five four nine pound. I'll try. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, and then what? So, uh, should we just have Jen start from her question? Yeah, sure. I think so. Okay, we'll we'll do that. We'll just we'll keep the intro and then have Jen start with her. Uh, <clears throat> we'll just have her start with her first question. Are you good with that, Jen? I guess so. And then, and then, uh, oh, wow. and then Elizabeth, you can just kind of re re explain your uh, taking advantage of that honeymoon period. That's right. <laughs> uh, you better take it now, baby, because I'm telling you, in two weeks, it's gonna be serious. In two weeks. Yeah, we're not messing around anymore. But, hey, that's gonna be our first episode for the second season, so we really right. are not messing around. Yeah, All right, serious. Maz, you're back. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Gotcha. All that's right. Better. Oh, awesome. Yep. We Wait, who said so, I was perfect? I did. No, we did. weren't talking about you. It was, it was oh, Elizabeth fine. we were okay. referring to. So, all right. So let's MJ oh, okay. count yep. Jen in. Count all right, Jen. Jen, you're gonna start. Jen's gonna start with her question. In three, two, one. So, Elizabeth, what sparked your interest in weather, and how did you get into forensic meteorology? Well, you know, it's so interesting because I was in graduate school and there was a here at the University of Nevada, Reno and the Desert Research Institute. And at the Institute, there was a brand new graduate student that had come from Asheville, North Carolina. And he had been an intern at the National Climatic Data Center. And that's our official archiver of weather data in the United States. So he shows up and we're all kind of graduate students sitting around chatting. And he said, he started talking about forensic meteorology and my jaw dropped and I said, what is that? And then he went with this whole explanation of it and how attorneys call all the time, insurance companies, investigators, all kinds of people for weather data. And he went into the whole thing and I thought, wow, that's, I want to do that. So that kind of started it. Oh, that's so neat. Like for forecast or how does that work in the courtroom? Well, you reconstruct weather for litigation purposes, essentially. And um, although I do reconstruct weather for all kinds of things that don't relate to litigation, but um, so you go back and you have the benefit, of course, of having all kinds of data that perhaps weren't available at the time, but you also have the disadvantage of some of the data actually disappear, although we're archiving more and more data as time goes on. It's much better now than when I first started in this. Um, and you reconstruct the events as to what happened, whether it be you know a murder, a plane crash, a boat sinking, building collapse, um, whatever it may be, and it's like a clean slate. And most of the time you work with other experts to determine what happened. And it's, I would say, the majority of the time, it's a combination of events. It's usually just not one big event that happened. It's kind of a culmination of things that happened, and you kind of piece it together and figure out what went wrong and what caused this accident, incident, death, whatever it may be. 
So you you started so like, um, Weather Extreme Limited. So that that's one of the things that your company does, correct? Is the forensic meteorology, right? Yes, that's one of the things, right? But so my my understanding is you started uh, based on your book. You started that one year after you received your doctoral degree. My I'm curious, but, having a okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's how it looks on paper. Um, I actually finished <laughs> my doctorate a year before that. It's just that I had um, I had six people on my committee, and three of the six were lived overseas. And so, trying to get them to sign and okay everything at the <laughs> end, sure. I, okay. I yeah, I turned it in late, and so yeah. well late but like a week. Was it after your classwork? Was I mean? Basically, oh, no. after it'd been okay. It had been a couple of years after I finished, and I did a postdoc and all kinds of stuff. It's just the dates, the way the dates worked out, just because of the ethicalities of um, submitting my dissertation. Okay. At the well, end. Re- regardless, yeah. you obviously started that fairly soon into your post-education career, right? Yes, I did. My, so curious, just from having a business background, is is I guess what motivated you to go, you know, s- screw this work, uh, working in the field. I'm I'm going to just start my own business. What prompted you to want to do that, or or what motivated you to go into business so soon? Well, I, it had been on my radar actually for a while, even though it looks like it was soon. I had wanted to do that, and. You know, when you first start your business, the phone doesn't actually ring off the hook. So while I first started my business, I was actually still um, teaching skiing for a living part while I was going to graduate school. And then I was teaching uh, at a four-year private college at Lake Tahoe. So I kept doing that actually for quite some time because that enabled me to get a paycheck and um, Mm – and it's a teaching institution, so they didn't have any problem with me doing research and consulting and all that on the side. It's called Sierra Nevada College. And so I stayed there actually for quite a bit of time while I kind of developed and matured the company. Okay. So now so that what, you have your own business, can you, uh, can you charge more to teach skiing? <laughs> funny i try to teach our son but he doesn't want any part of me teaching him <laughs> of course not <laughs> well i have kids too <laughs> yeah so. so so okay so i want to get into cuz i think this this forensic meteorology i think that's really it seems like an up and coming uh opportunity for meteorologists um but it it also is is very intriguing to me anyway Tell and in, in, in your book, um, treading on on thin air. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. But I, you used all kinds of different examples of some cases that you had been involved in. Tell me first off, what do you think, Elizabeth, was your most intense case? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, I, I have to say, probably the double murder death penalty case, just because of the ramifications of that case. Um, and the gravity of it. But that, in addition to a lot of the big aviation cases where um, the ones you see on the news where the big airliners go down, um, just because you have so much at stake, um, so many deaths, so many various parties involved Mm -hmm. um, from manufacturers of components and the aircraft and the people that have or families of people who have been killed. Um, those probably are the biggest, although I say that. And then some, it's interesting that you ask that because then actually some of the cases where you may just have one individual who is killed, but the ramifications of what happens from the outcome of the case can be huge. For example, the Amber White parasailing case where now they actually have laws on the books in the state of Florida, and I believe two other states now have actual parasailing laws on the books. Um, 
things you don't think about, even here at Lake Tahoe, for example, when you go parasailing, is that there are no regulations on, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with most of the, the groups, but you have to be careful when you go do things like this, jumping out of airplanes, that's one thing right. to solve. You can know. can you explain um, that case a little bit, I guess, Elizabeth, to our listeners? What what exactly what was that about? Yeah, that that's a really sad case. It was two sisters, and mm-hmm. they were down in Florida on vacation, and the mom, um, they went with friends, a group of friends, and uh, friends of the family, and, the, and their mother didn't travel with them, and they wanted to go out parasailing, and they called their mom on the cell phone, or a phone, I'm not sure what kind. And, you know, begging and pleading as kids do. Uh, <laughs> you know, they were young, but uh, they weren't like little babies. We yeah. want to go, we want to go. But the weather was coming in. And so she agreed, and they went out on the boat, and the winds were coming in. There were thunderstorms, and the winds were coming in. And what happened is, it's all on video, too, unfortunately. The parasail ended up over a set of hotels that lie along the beach. And once it becomes a certain strength of wind, they're not able to actually bring them in, crank them in with the system they have. And so they were being drugged along the rooftops, Mm. and uh, it was horrible. And then finally the rope broke. And one of the sisters died, and one of the sisters lived. And, I remember um, this. One, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so now, what? What? Um, what were you involved in? I guess why would they hired you to do? What was your task? To reconstruct the weather for the event. And in that case, we had the video evidence on top of all of the the uh, meteorological data. So, and, you know, eyewitnesses too, you know, and in a lot of cases, eyewitnesses, you know, there may be just a few eyewitnesses or a lot of eyewitnesses, but you have to be careful. Um, You have to take eyewitnesses with a grain of salt, Um, especially meteorologically speaking. You may have a witness that has really no knowledge of weather, but they may be a farmer and they may Mm -hmm. really know, you know, they may not be trained professional, but they know a lot about it. And then there are others that may not know anything about it, so they're trying to gauge and judge, you know, the wind speed and clouds. And so some people may say, oh, it was super cloudy, and other people may say, oh, it was really clear. Well, the, what happens is you might have, let's say, a high cloud deck, you know, let's say, you know, 10,000 feet. Well, some people will see that and say it's really cloudy, and other people will just look straight out and say, oh, it's totally clear. So you have to, yeah. you know, you have to, yeah. Do you get like emotional or like stressed out when, when doing these types of cases, especially when it's, you know, uh, you know, about people that were killed in, in, in different situations? It, like, how do you handle your emotions and, and the stress of that? You know, that's interesting. It's, it's kind of like you have to put it on check while you're doing the investigative work and just think about the task at hand. And then I'll get really into the weather about, you know, so I'll kind of put it aside. Um, But I have to say, there are times where sometimes you're allowed to sit in the courtroom as an expert witness prior to testifying. And sometimes the judge says, doesn't allow it. So you Mm -hmm. just sit outside and you walk in, do your spiel and you leave. But the times where you're allowed to come into the courtroom and, and I'm allowed to watch opening statements, that's yeah. when it's difficult. And I have to kind of put my emotions in check, but that's when I find it difficult. Sure. Say, Elizabeth, in in, in reading some of the sections of your book, I, I was just amazed at how many different instances in which forensic meteorology comes into play. I was, I was just amazed at that. Um, but I know you mentioned the first case you mentioned when Phil asked the question, um, was the double murder uh, uh, death penalty case. That was the one that happened that involved twilight. Is, is that right? Yeah, it actually involved lighting conditions. But, yeah. It, yeah, and it became a little more complicated because, uh, as it turned out, when 
looking back on things, I realized when I looked back on the case to write about it, that I wasn't given, no fault of anyone's, but um, all of the information, which happens sometimes, and it turns out later t testimony asked the mine that there was some discussion about actually the time of the murders. So the times may have been different, may not, I'm not sure, but I testified to just the facts, and that's exactly right, the cloud cover, the lighting conditions, the twilights, that sort of thing, right. So, Elizabeth, so with all the heavy stuff that you've done, like what's the most exciting and fun part that you like look forward to with your business? The Perland Project, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> You know, we're, the Perlan project is, Perlan means, it's P-E-R-L-A-N, um, it's Icelandic, and uh, it's for the pearlescence type cloud, mother of pearl clouds that form up in the stratosphere. And that is a project, it's not just a retrocetting project, but it is a project to take a manned glider, two pilots, no engine, to 100,000 feet. That's and wild. It is. And we're in phase two of it right now. So phase two is to get to 90,000 feet. Mm. And we we have to use the polar night jet. So we have to be on the edge of the polar vortex, which means we have to be in one of the poles, the North Pole, near the, near the North Pole or South Pole in their respective winter time. Um, and we use mountain waves. And then the polar night jet allows these to these mountain waves to carry on up into the stratosphere. So we're dealing with generally cold conditions. Um, we don't have that much daylight and uh, dangerous because you can get breaking mountain waves, terrible turbulence. Um, you can have all kinds of issues. So, uh, But we've got the glider outfitted with all kinds of atmospheric instruments as well as these CubeSats. NASA has these CubeSats. Um, that they've so we just use their design and we have these small little like cubby holes so to speak where anyone can put their they just um, you know they submit something and we decide you know who goes on there um, they can put their experiments on there and even like a third grade class this year put their experiment on there they put a marshmallow in there and they wanted to see how the marshmallow was affected by going up at <laughs> cold temperatures so it's really it's really great i just saw elf so when you say temperature uh or when you say marshmallow <laughs> i just I, I think will ferrell just playing with the cotton balls in the doctor's room and and, and i'll add that we right now here in minnesota we think the polar vortex is right where we are so you might be able to do it here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did the same marshmallow experiment next to fire we found out it's quite good yeah <laughs> so so since you're on the the perland project elizabeth um what one of the things i found interesting and and obviously I'll, I'll be honest with you probably what you're involved in from the weather standpoint of catching these waves off the mountains and a lot of that is just shoom, o over my head, and that's that's why you guys get paid the big bucks to figure that stuff out. Uh, I was interested in the fact that the the first flight was I, I was interested in the pressurization, and the first flight it sounded like they wore pressure suits, um, but that apparently was limiting, uh, somewhat limiting that the second phase that you guys are working on now, you're you're pressurizing the compartment, is that correct? Yes. So the first phase, Steve Fawcett um, and Aner and Avoldson were the pilots. And what we did is we just used an off-the-shelf but highly modified glider and took the engine out of it. Some, some of the gliders actually do have little, like, snowmobile-looking engines on them and mm -hmm. outfitted it with oxygen and all this other stuff. And they wore NASA pressure suits. But what happened was these suits, as you get up to altitude, they get very uncomfortable because they inflate. And so it gets harder to move, difficult, and they can't sweat in these because um, then that causes condensation and things and then they can't see. So mm. it's a whole slew of things. So, And they have to wear diapers. 
Um, <laughs> it sounds strange, but they have to wear diapers. In the What's room. wrong with that? Nothing. <laughs> and glider pilots, they, they generally wear diapers anyway, because if you're going to be up for, you know, six, That's eight, true. nine hours. That's true. You know. So <laughs> Nature but, falls. you hit a big downdraft. First you say it, and then you do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they set the record, the world record, a little over 50,000 feet. And both Aynor and, St- and Steve looked at each other, well, t- spoke to each other and said, you know, we, we proved our point. Let's go down, and now let's be- build the aircraft. And so now we're in phase two. And unfortunately, Steve Fawcett was killed in that plane crash down by Mammoth Lakes, California. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. set us back, actually, and slowed the project down for a few years. Mm-hmm. And now we had uh, Dennis Tito come on board. Um, the name may not sound familiar, but he was the first uh, man to go into space with the Russians, the first American, excuse me. And, um, and he he helped get us going again, and then Airbus came on as our title sponsor. So we have the aircraft built now. We we were in uh, Argentina this past year, which was a terrible year for waves down in South America. We got up to about 22, 23,000 feet. Uh, but we weren't there for very long because we were still building the aircraft up until the time we could take it down, and we were there for just a few weeks. So... We are all set to go. Um, we're going to be flying the aircraft. It's 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 such a great looking aircraft. It's all carbon fiber. It's really cool looking. Neat windows and the paint job. And on top of it, it's super strong aircraft, so it can take a lot of G's. It's beautiful looking. And we are going to be flying it with Sierra starting in about February. And we may actually even set a a new world record beat our own record in the Sierra, but we won't be able to get, you know, up to 90,000 feet in the Sierra because obviously there's no polar vortex here. So then we're going to head back down to El Calafate, Argentina, uh, and be ready to start flying about mid-July. So I want to, Elizabeth, I want a quick jump to your book, um, Treading on Thin Air. And the, the question I've got for you on this, this, I'll tell you what, this book was, you did a very good job of explaining and using past history, uh, things like that that I really enjoyed reading a little bit about. It might be things like D-Day, it might be something about the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald, some of the plane crashes that uh, you've been involved forensically with to then explain weather concepts and and things of that nature. And I thought it was a great way of using something in the past that really caught my attention. Um, And again, things like, uh, especially D-Day and talking about, you know, that the the day was specified because of the weather and the tide, something like that to then get into explaining weather concepts. And that does a great job for someone like me who's not a meteorologist. I'm not an atmospheric scientist a guy with a biology degree, right, that uh, to help me better understand weather, not only weather terminology, but weather concepts and, and how it works. My question is, number, really two questions. What got, what made you decide to go, hey, I should write a book, number one. Number two, wh- what gave you the idea to go, to, to use those historical moments to help explain weather concepts? You know, for a while I've wanted to write a book, and for a long time I was thinking, well, I should write a book about forensic meteorology, and and then I was being asked to write textbooks, and I thought, you know, I just want to write a book that is a little bit more accessible to everyone. I want my mom to read it, my dad, my friends, uh, my family, and be able to get a glimpse into this world that at least I enjoy so much. And in order to do that, I thought I have to. It has to be disarming, and I have to use real world, you know, scenarios and stories and and factual events that have occurred. But I'm also giving it through my perspective. So it's kind of a unique combination of a memoir combined with weather and climate and these different events. And that's how I decided to to write the book. So 
so I thought, well, as long as I'm writing it, I've got to lay it all out there and um, talk about my life, talk about events and my ideas about things, but also about what ha- what has gone on in our history, this amazing history of weather and climate. And uh, so that's kind of where it all stemmed from. You know, it's interesting because, you know, you know, everybody talks about weather and, and to say, well, you know, weather impacts everything. You read your book and it really got my mind going where, where you know, there's so many areas from a business standpoint that you can make mm-hmm. money in. Like whether you talk about the Home Depot versus Lowe's or it's just like, oh, wow, I need to, I need to live another lifetime just so I can do more stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I know. You know, it does impact everything, and it impacts so much about not just business, which is huge. Well, you know, just on that line, you know, that's why, you know, the National Weather Service and NOAA is in the Department of Commerce, which a lot of people, I just think, don't realize, but that's a natural place for it to be in the Department of Commerce. It's a good point. And then, yeah, and then if you think about it, how we feel, you know, it's Every day it impacts so much about how we feel. Is it cloudy? Oh, I don't, you know, you get a little depressed, or is it raining, or is it sunny, or, you know, it just impacts everything that you do. So, yeah, I just, I'm just a fan, obviously. <laughs> well, we've so, got your. So what's your, your second book going to be? <laughs> True. I, I That's don't a great know question. Yet. <laughs> What's the follow-up? I don't know, but there will be another one. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you this. Your your publisher, Pegasus Books, was kind enough to actually send us a copy. That So we've got a copy we're going to give away to one of our lucky listeners. Um, we're going to have more details on that here later in the podcast. Uh, but let me ask you this um, before we get to our, our lightning round. How, how can our listeners follow you, Elizabeth, what, and contact you? Uh well, my main way is weatherextreme.com. They can go online and they can email me from there. I also have um, drelizabethaustin.tv, I think is the website, for things like when I'm giving talks or going places, that sort of thing. Uh, but weatherextreme.com is probably the easiest and best way. Very good. All awesome. right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump to our lightning round. Uh, this is our speed round of fun questions for our guest. And Elizabeth <laughs> knows nothing. I, I didn't even give her a heads up on what you to didn't. expect tonight. Um, here's, <laughs> here's the key. You, you guys may not know this, but Dr. Austin's father is composer Patrick Moody Williams. He is the uh, winner of two Grammys, four Emmys, and one Oscar nomination for wow. his jazz tv and film compositions uh and get this he has arranged music for frank fucking sinatra okay this blew me away he's also uh he's had john williams who on the (laughs) night of star wars rogue one opening up uh john williams the conductor of star wars and many many he's he actually conducted a piece uh, that Elizabeth's uh, dad had had composed. Um, he's also wow. a, his music has accompanied shows such as Columbo, Lou Grant, the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I think that's Maz's favorite show. <laughs> the Bob Newhart Show, The Streets of San Francisco, and The Simpsons, just to name a few. Wow! So here's what we're gonna do, Elizabeth. Um, this this is all about you tonight, but we figured we'll we'll give you a little connection here as well to your dad. Uh, we're going to play a TV version of Name That Tune. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, but here, here's what you have no to pressure. understand. No because pressure. of our, our low-tech setups and licensing issues, we're, we're not playing with music. Yeah, we, we don't have any music to play you. So what we're going to do is we're going to share the lyrics of popular TV shows to see if you can, uh, we're going to do two things. See if you can finish the line of the, of the song that I start to, to give you the lyrics to. And if you can name the TV show that it belongs to. Okay. Are you ready? I'm all set. All right. Pull those bootstraps up here. Here's the first one. (laughs) Making your way in the world today. 
takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries, it sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go. What's the rest of the line? Oh, God. You know I know that. Um... And if you don't, you can name, do you know the show, the name of the show that that's to? You know, I don't, but I know, I know that one, but I don't. Here's a hint. <laughs> All right. Sometimes you want to wanna go. Hmm. Where everybody help. knows Where your name. Oh, All right. oh, yeah. In the, TV, do, do, do. in the TV show. Anybody, it's open to anybody. Cheers. 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 All right. Oh, my God. No, that's good. All right, so second one. Was, Let's go. Wait, Let's wait, go. wait. While Elizabeth was studying, we were all watching TV, right? <laughs> that's <laughs> how it goes. Yes. That's true. All right, well, here's the next one. Let's see how this one goes. So no one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke. You're broke. Your love no. life's DOA. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. But... What's the rest of it? These are hard. They are hard they when are you're speaking hard. them. I agree. Um, but I know that I know what. What? Okay, so so we'll open it up. What's the name? What's the show? Friends. Friends. That yes. is Friends. Friends. Okay. So when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, but I'll be there I'll for, be you. There I'll be there for right. you. All right. So that's Friends. All right. <laughs> I, Elizabeth, understand you know this. I'm I'm trying to span a couple different decades <laughs> because if if I just did all the shows that MJ and myself and Maz knew, we would be kicking all the young folks. I uh, wouldn't listen to us anymore. So I'm I'm trying to be somewhat hey, relevant. Hum. Maybe you can right. hum it. <laughs> okay. Can we do multiple choice? Uh, it's too late for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So maybe we can spell it. Here's number three. Number three. This this one is probably no pressure, but probably the easiest of all of them. All right. Uh oh. Oh no. Love, exciting and new. Come aboard. We're expecting you. Oh my God! Is that the love boat? Love. <laughs> Ding yeah. Very good. Very good. The love boat. Good job. Yes. I see you've been on that cruise before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's been on that cruise. Yes. All right, Elizabeth. Here we go. We're gonna do number four. We got two more. Number four. Um, this, this one is relevant and could be a little interesting. We'll see. I woke up in a Soho doorway. A policeman knew my name. He said, you can go to sleep at home tonight if you can get up and walk away. I staggered back to the underground and the breeze blew back my hair. I remember throwing punches around and preaching from my chair. Well, who are you? I have, Boy, I have no idea. What? Who are you? Who, 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 who are Wait, you? So what's the show? That's not a TV show, is it? That's, that, it that's belongs, a it's a TV show uses that song. Oh, boy, I agree with you. That would be The Who, by the way, but what popular, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Right. What popular TV show <laughs> what? uses that theme? Boy, I have no idea. None that I know. And that would be CSI. Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, yes. oh wow. Really? Yep. Boy, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dr. Forensic Meteorologist, that would be CSI, right? All right. Wow. Last one, and this one's going to be – this one was uh, – there's no way I would get this either, so there's no oh, pressure right. for this one. Right. But but we had to include something newer. This is a newer television show. Uh, here it goes. And, and I'll, I'll just give you a heads up now. This is by the Bare Naked Ladies. Mm-hmm. Our whole universe was in a hot, oh, dense state. Yeah. And then nearly 14 Got billion it. years ago, Got expansion it. started weight. The earth began to cool. The autotrophs began to drool. Neanderthals mm-hmm. developed tools. We built a wall. They we built, built the pyramids. Wall. Math, science, history, unraveling the mysteries. They all started that with all started the Big with... Bang. Hey, what TV show is that from? Is that the Big Bang Theory? Yeah! yeah! Big Bang Theory. Yeah! Yeah! All right. Yeah. I got that. I, I actually have never seen that show. <laughs> oh wow! Shot in the dark. <laughs> Way to finish. That's Good awesome. job. Good job, Penny. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. done. All right. 
That that was outstanding. So uh good job, Elizabeth. That was good. Hope you had fun with that. Uh we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take our first break for Brady Storm School. And when we get you know, I haven't even got Brady Storm School, so we might not have, <laughs> we might not have it. If I'll tell you what, for our listeners, if as soon as I break, if you get Brady Storm School, surprise. Uh, if you won't, because we had we haven't got it yet. Again. Uh, but when we come back, we'll have some fun discussing the importance of knowing where you live so you don't die. <laughs> All right, cut. Ooh, All right. <laughs> Elizabeth, great job. Oh, yeah, welcome. Thanks. You're back. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. And I don't was... know how long the internet been back on. Let me switch over to my. Okay. As I say, you well, can welcome hang up back and great now. job on the TV shows. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's always so great. You have a really cool though. office. Yeah, you well, do. Well, thanks. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're really nice. Is that now? Is that your home or is that your office? Your office. No, office. office. <laughs> wow. I have a thing. I don't like offices to be officey. It looks homey. Right. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, it looks great. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. We have this thing. Than my Take first a nap in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is just <laughs> one room. The main part of the office, there's this uh, see-through, big, long, neat fireplace with the scarlet rocks. And so you can look through to the conference table from my office. It's really nice. Damn, you oh, guys must awesome. make a lot of money. I'm, I need to go into forensic <laughs> ideology. Yeah, <laughs> holy shit. Oh, hey, let's all go see it. Road trip. Road, Road trip. Yeah. <laughs> my my business like office has carpet. Uh, it's got a window. It's got a desk. Chair. I don't have a, a bookshelf. That's 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 getting about it for uh, my first office had a plunger. <laughs> that's right. Toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very good. All right, um, uh, Elizabeth, can would you do me a favor? Would you record a little? Um, I don't even know what you call these. Liner. A, a one-liner where you say, hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Austin. You're listening to Stormfront Freaks podcast. Would you record that? We can just play that for future podcasts. Would you do that for us? Sure. All right. So sure. what what do you want to say? So what, what what's your what's your claim to fame? So you say, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Austin, author of Treading on Thin cool Air, office. Dr. Elizabeth Austin. Cool office um, person. Perlin. <laughs> <laughs> Perlin, what, what, what do you Audrey, want to use yeah. as your claim to fame when you introduce yourself? I use the treading on thin air. Okay. So just say, uh, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Austin, author of Treading on Thin Air, you're listening to the Stormfront Freaks podcast. <clears throat> Sound good? Okay. Sounds Mark, good. Give her, give her a quick count in. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Austin author of Treading on Thin Air, and you are listening to the Stormfront Freaks podcast. Bam! Beautiful. Sweet. Well done. Wow, one take. One That's take. Good. One That's take first. first. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Um, uh, we got Jen back. We'll go ahead and get, uh, we'll jump to the next um, discussion segment. So, okay, so so the discussion segment, here's what I wanted to bring up, because relatively recently, there's been a little hubbub on whether Twitter and in that community about people not knowing, being able to pick themselves out in a map. So the problem is, is when there's warnings being issued and there's polygons coming out from the National Weather Service, uh, pe- people don't know if that's them or not. Number two, the issue being to television meteorologists and maybe Maz, you can Uh, talk a little bit about this, and Jen, you probably could too, where people, like, you know, you you try and pinpoint some of the bigger communities in their area and say, here's what the weather's going to be, yet you still get that guy in in Podunk, Idaho, that says, but what's my weather going to be? You didn't didn't say me, and and because they don't, like, know where they fit in with everybody else and know that it's probably going to be pretty similar to that bigger city that's right next to you issue. Um, so maybe yeah, that's why I have friends in the mafia because uh, they can take care of that problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, so when we come back, um, I'll just kind of introduce that a little bit. And if if you guys want to at least start talking about because one, one of the things I'm going to bring up is the National Weather Service in Birmingham. And so this is coming from the National Weather Service. They had a pretty harsh Facebook post 
uh, ripping people that that don't know where they live. And yeah, I don't know if that maybe should have been coming from the National Weather Service or not, <laughs> but it did. And then I, and then I can also bring up uh, James Spann, who's also down in in Alabama in the Birmingham area, a television meteorologist that was also kind of had a blog where he's kind of bitching and complaining a little bit about people that, uh, you know, are, are asking him mostly on social media, but you know, what's my weather going to be when he yes. realized, Hey, he's trying to tell people, yes. I can't cover every single community people, you know, mm-hmm. you got to know where you live and know what you're closest to, to get an idea of where you're at. Um, so we, we can talk about what's the responsibility of the media and the national weather service and of the consumer in that scenario. so phil did the did the birmingham the national weather service post get any you know any nasty feedback i couldn't when i went to that link i couldn't get to it i don't know if anybody else had that problem. oh really but um, I, could, I, I saw the span article but yeah the span article was really good but yeah i had trouble getting to that too but i have a lot to say about that because and i'm huh. sure maz does too because okay being on air anytime there was bad All right. weather. So I'll, I'll introduce it and then I'll let you guys talk because you can probably explain more and, and I'll bitch and complain from the consumer end or something a little <laughs> bit. Or, I don't know. We'll see well, what I can, angle I I take. can tell you about my experience with my son who has absolutely no idea where anything is. Oh. Okay. Except that he can use you know, <laughs> ah, Google listen Maps. Listen to Jen. To... Oh. <laughs> Your poor son doesn't, doesn't know anything about his personal geography. All right. That's okay though. You guys have questions on that, or are you ready to roll? Ready to roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. All right, MJ. There we go. Three, two, one. All right, welcome back. So either you just listened to Brady's Storm School or you didn't. At this point, I really don't know if you did or not. But uh, we have Elizabeth uh, joining us for our discussion segment to kind of help explain the challenges of, of knowing your state and county geography and how that fits into storm warnings and, and just the weather in your area. And so what I, what I want to bring up is just recently there's been a little hubbub about that. And we have two different angles on this. One angle is actually from the National Weather Service, the Birmingham office. They had a Facebook post. And the post uh, says this, says, folks, we can't emphasize enough how important it is to know where you live. And that's all in caps. Uh, but everything from the National Weather Service seems to always be in all caps. But until just recently, <laughs> yeah, right? I know. Until just recently, yeah. in order to adequately protect yourself you. and your loved ones, you must capitals be able to pick out your location on a map. And it's as simple as that. And then they go on to say, we create, we create or issue our forecast and severe weather graphics for your benefit. Uh, caps, no matter how much information we give you. It won't be of much good if you can't determine whether your location is highlighted on the graphics. So now there uh, was a smiley face at the end of that, right? (laughs) You know what? Funny thing is, there was at the very end. It says, "Thanks for your help and understanding." (laughs) Smiley face. (laughs) How about that? That That was the HR department. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So first off. I guess national that's coming from the National Weather Service, and I think there's some legitimacy to what they're saying. However, what do you guys feel about them saying that? Well, I think I like what they say. It is a little harsh, but there you have to take some personal responsibility when it comes to severe weather um, and storms. Because um, I used to be an on-camera meteorologist. I would post on social, and people would be like, but what's going to happen here, here, or at my house? And I'm trying to, you know, it's hard to figure out, do they not know, you know, their location when I post an image? And basically, like, if I post, make a Facebook post, I, you know, have a paragraph of, you know, when the weather's going to come, where it's going to impact first. Um, I go kind of in depth. I have an image, but people will still ask, but what about where I live in my town? And I don't know if it's they just see quickly see the post and they skim it, but they don't really read it and they just want to know because they're scared or, you know, they're just lazy and don't read the post. It's they don't know where they're located on the map. It's a combination of many things. But I think what the National Weather Service is trying to do is make sure that people have to take on some kind of responsibility for their safety in severe weather and in anything in general. And I think it's important 
but also there may be ways that we can help educate people too about like what county they live in, you know, some kind of education when there isn't severe weather. So when they hear their county is under a tornado warning, they know to take shelter when, you know, in case if they didn't know, they wouldn't know what to do. Well, you, you let me just quick add this here and you guys can keep talking, but you bring up, Jen, the other, the second part of this and the whole knowing where you live scenario, which is uh, James Spann, who's a, a well-known uh, TV meteorologist down in the Alabama, uh, Birmingham, Alabama area. Uh, he had a blog post on medium.com kind of talking about a lot of the same things, but as he was uh, talking about storms, he said, it's always been a mystery. I'll spend considerable time putting together a simple and easy to understand map or graphic that describes the coming weather threats and risk posted on social media. And right out of the gate, the first comments are like, what about Coleman? What about Jasper? What about Pell City? And he says, it goes on and on. He said, a simple two minute read of the blog post or a good review of the posted map or graphic is going to answer those questions. But he says, year after year, I keep getting those questions. And I think every meteorologist probably across the country in the world is in his same boat because I experienced it. Maz, I'm sure you experienced it too. And it is one of those things, do they just not want to click a link to a blog post and read through it? Or they just want to know the answer now where they live? How How is it going to impact me over my house, you know, at what exact time? And it's funny, like, with that being said, I would always get questions about, like, exactly when is going to going to impact me here. Like they want a specific exact time, which, you know, weather isn't an exact science, obviously. So, you know, it's always so hard. So I think it's multiple things going on there where some people don't know their geography, where they live. Others, you know, just maybe are lazy and just, you know, want to know for them and they just don't want to click or they're nervous and they're scared and it drives them not to like read thoroughly through everything and just ask, but, but where, what about me? You know? So, so here's a, yeah. here's a, here's a question and maybe Maz and, and you can talk about what Jen said, but then also this, I, I wonder, and I'm not making any comments by this, but uh, is it a generational thing? And maybe Maz, you know that because I'll take my, my son, for example, who's 14 and I, I bought him a, I bought him a paper, not bought him. I got him a free Minnesota state map for his birthday and said, here, study this because we can be driving from our home they to still our, sell those? they don't sell them. They give them away at the okay. state fair. And stuff. <laughs> um, but, uh, free means. exactly. But he, you know, <laughs> they can't so give free. them. I mean, they, they make lots of them. I don't think they can give them all away. Anyway, um, we'll be driving from our house to our, our lake place, which is about 90 miles away. And we go through the same places all the time. And I'll ask him, where are we? And, and he's no idea. Absolutely no idea. Yeah. And, and, you know, he'll say somewhere that's completely different, you know, that we maybe go through, but that he doesn't. And I'm thinking, wow, have we lost, you know, has, has our youth lost that ability to really know where they are in relation to other things? You know, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. But then I think back to the uh, early 90s when I worked for a uh, radio station in Huron, South Dakota. And I went through a couple of severe weather events in the summertime. And uh, we always, I, I, at that time, I still had people call me when I'd be talking about, you know, severe storms for certain counties. And they'd call me and say, am I in that? Do I, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe it isn't. But I don't know, Maz or anybody, do you, do you think is it generational or not? Has yeah. this been going on forever? Well, to answer the first question way back there, congratulations and kudos to the guy from the Weather Service. And oh, by the way, you're fired uh, because you probably should not say those things, you know. And, and, and the same thing is true on TV, too. I mean, you get the people that are doing it. You're thinking to yourself, you don't say this, but you're thinking to yourself, unless you're a little kid or you just moved into the area, why the heck don't you know where you live? And I might say to them, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'll try and give you a call a little bit later, Bob. And then I raise one eyebrow because I'm not calling him, right? <laughs> and then the third thing is you get the survival of the fittest thing, too, where you're like, oh, sorry, Bob. He's not going to be with us next year. <laughs> and it's just because, you know, it's like, come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, you never say that on TV, right? Because right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. then the general manager comes down, but. But no, I, I think you're right. I think there's everything is easy that, or I should say, everything has become so easy that we give our kids things 
that they don't even really have to work at a lot of things. I And I'll just say this from the standpoint of being like 52 and talking to the millennials out there. If you put forth just a little bit of effort, you're going to surpass a lot of your peers. Right. You know, man, I'm a millennial, right. I think. <laughs> hey, well, uh, look uh, at you. Look, seriously, you have surpassed. You have. 99% of your peers, there I'm you sure. <laughs> Elizabeth, well, let me ask you this. Has, has geography, has that come up in any of your forensic cases? Of not knowing, pe- people not knowing their geography when it comes to weather, whether it's any of the insurance cases you've worked on or anything like that? Not, or what not, forensic means. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what forensics means does, but, you know, geography just, in t- well, not, not so much in terms of geography, but in terms of just common sense, you know, yeah. um, terrain, situations, is it icing, is it snowing, raining, whatever, just pretty much basic common sense comes up quite a bit, but um, which probably plays hand in hand with, this geography question. Right. <laughs> let, let, let me bring this up from the consumer standpoint, because I, I will throw this out there. I've, I have, um, I have lived for extended periods in, uh, oh gosh, I don't know. I'll throw out, you know, four, maybe prison. five, five different areas. Prison was not one of them. No, uh, <laughs> okay. but, but here's the thing. Some States, their County maps, their County boundaries, are just square, 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 yeah. square, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Right. Mm-hmm. And if sometimes, I'll be honest with you, if some of those maps don't show either major roadways or if you can't right. identify the river boundaries, mm-hmm. some of those state maps that, that the media is showing of these and the National Weather Service is showing – uh, I, I feel for some of the people in some of these states. Now, not all states, but some of these states, it's just squares and rectangles. Good luck. Yeah, yeah that's true. You know, no. sometimes we did that on purpose. We would take the states, rivers, city names off and just put a pinpoint and go, good luck with that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I'll say, too, not everybody had to sit in the front seat uh, of the car driving, navigating for their father all the time either, which, you know. <laughs> is probably how I learned my map, at least for my our, our state. It, it the, the whole thing. It, it's so interesting, and it all plays into you know our goal as a you know a meteorologist, whether on camera or not, is to make sure you disseminate the information about severe weather and, and weather in general to people, so they understand it and they can make you know the proper you know, adjustments or whatever to their daily lives, or if there's severe weather, they know where to, you know, take shelter or when to take shelter. But it's, it, it's a lot of it, it. It's so difficult because when there's severe weather and people die, you wonder why, like, did they not know where they were on the map and, and didn't know they were under a severe threat or, you know, what was the reasoning behind it? They, did they not have a safe place to go? And I think it's something that meteorologists are just trying to you know, we want to save lives and we just want to get down to, you know, we want people to understand the forecast and, and just make it so the next severe weather event, there's no deaths at all whatsoever. And it just, but it, what I said before, it all comes down to the personal responsibility. You, you always are, you know, you can't just rely on, you know, people to tell you things, you know, if you move to a new area or you're traveling, you should know what city kind of surrounding areas where you're going. So in case there is severe weather or or something else going on, you know, you get stuck on the side of the road, you know where you are or kind of in the general vicinity. Um, And I think that plays a part in it. And maybe when local TV stations and national weather service offices have their kind of, you know, weather fairs, they can maybe give out, you know, some maps of with cities and counties so people, you know, can learn them better. Or or maybe we just need to educate better somehow. I mean, it's hard to do that on a newscast, but maybe in blogs, it's, it's difficult. Cause like I got a geography degree. I love geography. So I'm like, I always look at maps. I'm like, this is fun, you know, right. but I, but I guess if you're not a you know geek like that, you know there are some things about other subjects, you know, and and fields that I know nothing about. So I mean, it's I, I understand, but it's it's difficult. So so from okay, an edu- geography major, no, I'm going to quiz her on this. You love geography. What are the okay. only two state capitals that rhyme? 
See, don't do that to me, Mads. Don't do that to me. Don't do it. All right. Don't, hey, don't. It's your honeymoon. It's your honeymoon. It's, it's still my honeymoon, only your. Guys, I'm drinking yeah, the we'll, we'll let you, we'll let you off the hook. That's All okay, right. Jen. It's fine. Okay, so from you so don't out. ever do it again. I know. <laughs> Austin and so, Austin. Austin and oh, yeah, Austin. Right. No, there you go. Okay. So from an education it's standpoint. From an education standpoint, you know, when I when I see uh, both on social media and on, you know, weathercasts on the news and, and so on, when I see them put the maps up, most of the time they always have the same cities there with the same uh, the same, you know, temperatures and, and conditions and things like that. Yeah. You know, would it has it ever been considered those of you who've done that? in mixing that up a little bit or is that just because it's a pain to do and or is it because i mean i I don't know is that an educational thing that could be done mix it up a little bit so people see different cities that are close to them on the maps in that my last job we actually did that we kind of got like uh we zoomed into different areas of our our dma our region that we covered and we 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 did switch the cities because people are always like you never mentioned my town. And I right. understand that. I love hearing my town. Even now, like when someone mentions my town, you know, on TV, I'm like, that's my town. Yeah, you right. know, I don't know why. It's exciting. <laughs> um, but no, we do do that. But I, I totally understand, though, especially nationally. I think it's hard because we want to make sure people identify with the largest cities. I think that's what people, most people identify with, but then of course it's harder to understand exactly where you are between those large cities. You know, I get the, you know, spatial resolution, you know, um, there. So it's hard. I don't know if you just, instead of just one tweet, you put out multiple tweets of different regions. So they're more like zoomed in and, and they have a better understanding of, the smaller towns. I mean, and that maybe is something we should be doing, you know, especially on social and, and on air too. But then again, I, I know we'll always still have those people that'll be like, but what oh, yeah. about me? You oh know? yeah. Yeah. So it's, well, tell us, uh, tell us what you guys think. You can comment by email at questions at stormfrontfreaks.com or you can comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash stormfrontfreaks or our Twitter account, at Stormfront Freak. Uh, we'll share your responses on our next show. So we're going to go ahead and take another break. Uh, oh, do you have something? Yeah, I was going to say, couldn't we get the name to be the same on all of them? Because every time there's not an S or there is an S. I mean, I'm here and I still get messed up by that. So. <laughs> uh, Some already taken. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter only allows you to put so many um, letters. And so unfortunately... Uh, I couldn't fit that S on Stormfront Freak. So Twitter is the only one that just doesn't have the S on it. Note you're... to Twitter, you're fired. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we're going to take a break, uh, and we're going to let you know on the break how you can win Dr. Elizabeth Austin's book, Treading on Thin Air. Uh, we're going to send this to a lucky listener. And when we come back, we'll throw our weather fools under the bus and share some weather resources. Okay. Sweet. Did, did right. we get Elizabeth back? I think she's on the phone. Cool. Oh, wait, no, she was, and then she dropped just now. So maybe she thought we were done. No. She's just afraid to come back with us. Oh. <laughs> Mad. I hope we didn't scare her away. Okay. <laughs> She's um, losing clients as we speak it. just because of us. No, we're losing <laughs> oh. listeners as we speak. What yeah, no talking? kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, shoot. Okay. Well, well that's too bad. Um, I'll follow up with her. What, uh, all right, let's do this. Um, it, uh, anybody with comments on anything? No, I think it's good. I, I'm right. so, I love our last topic because it's just, there's so much you can talk about with it. And it's just, oh, she's coming back. I think, uh, Ooh, Dr. yeah, I, I thought I was, yay, online. yay. I thought I was online, but I, but at least I'm on the phone. Hey. Well, good. Do you know the theme song from Welcome Back, Cotter? <laughs> I remember back, that, actually. Back, yeah. Back. Good funny. job. So uh, I, hope, I hope, Elizabeth, you're okay with me um, using television TV show songs oh, that was as, great, actually. as that a was, link to your dad. Great. And I just thought that was a, a little intriguing connection you have That's with really your cool. father there. So. Yeah, that was really great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so is your father still writing anything, or is he retired, done? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Really? Actually, yeah, he just did this um, 
there's this Italian singer, I hadn't heard of her, called Laura Pausini, but he just finished a Christmas album with her. And oh, wow. Got, wow. Yeah. And he's doing all kinds, he does all kinds of stuff constantly. So, oh, my. Yeah. Wow. So do you have so so do you have any music background yourself? I mean, growing I up do. around that. Oh yeah, yeah. So, we all learned to play piano when we were little, so we could learn, you know, bass clef and treble yep. clef. Yep. And then we, I picked the flute, but we all picked instruments, and and I ended up, you know, in graduate school stopping just because I was so busy, which was a shame. But sure. Gonna... So you did it all through college, though, huh? Yes. Uh-huh. Wow. Oh, wow. Sure. Wow. That's awesome. Very nice. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, that it's is awesome. Blue through college? Yeah. <laughs> that awesome. is so cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Elizabeth, thank you so much uh, yes. for joining us this evening and being patient with our technical issues and all that fun oh, stuff. But Thank you for my technical issues. You know, it's crazy. We have this, actually, it's supposed to be this fantastic internet company that provides to all the businesses and casinos and this and that. And this is the first time I've ever had this happen. <laughs> well, I'm sure it, it had everything to do with us and not you. So oh, I, wouldn't yeah. be, I wouldn't be too concerned no, about it. No, I don't it, think but... so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we really had a lot of fun having you on. That You really bring some very interesting things um, that, that, we wanted to have for our listeners a very intriguing aspect to the meteorological field uh, that, that um, was fun to listen to your story. So thanks for sharing. It's very cool. Thanks. Thanks yeah. so much for having yeah. me on. Um, yeah, I want will... to get uh, signed rogue one posters. Just saying I got kids, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will, uh, Elizabeth, I'll follow up with you here tomorrow or, or over the weekend um, just to follow up with a couple things, and then I'll make sure you get uh, copies to the the finished edited product and all that fun stuff. Great. We'll post them everywhere. That's great. Thank you so much. Cool. Good. It was fun having That's you, amazing. Elizabeth. Great. Thanks for joining us. Have Thank a great you. night. You too. All Bye. right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye, Maz. You sounded like uh, David Spade on Saturday Night Live, bye the bye. airline steward. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. It's my bye. Hi. Bye bye. Have a good. Bye. <laughs> All right. Um, so I will. I'm filling in for Brady for Weather Fools. Uh, Jen, by the way, great intro. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, awesome awesome. production. Did a good job. She's awesome. I still can't believe we, we got her. Like, I, I, I'm i like, seriously. She can't believe it either. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what she's thinking. I warn everybody. I swear to God, I warn them. You know, it's, you know, I send out, um, I think most of you guys have seen, I, you know, I've got that. <clears throat> the media guide. Media guide or, or guest information guide. Yeah, that that I send out, you know, to all our guests, you know, which which shows all the, you know, all the team and their bios and talks about the show and what to expect. And yeah. then it's got quotes from past guests, and <laughs> okay. listeners, you know, what they like about the show and all that stuff. So we always come across as this professional, <laughs> well-run, you know, operation. And then they actually come on the show and shit hits the fan right. and we never hear from them again. <laughs> So I, you know, I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking we're good for about another year until the word finally gets out. No. Don't go on Stormfront. No. Listen, after after she dropped, the only thing that brought her back is you'd said we're in 30 countries. You know, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. That's really well, we awesome. We have we have one download in all 30 of those countries. That's right. But it counts, dude. Many, I'm telling you, it many counts. Of them are one. They never listen to us again, but it counts. <laughs> We, we just we didn't bounce our signal for all yeah. those countries, did we? <laughs> What's what was that? I said we didn't bounce our cell signal through like yeah. all those countries, and it's yeah. really just one guy. Yeah, it's, well, it could be. That's all right. If it makes our numbers look good, we'll take it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. All right. So, right. Uh, so I'm covering for Brady Weather Fools. Who has a weather fool? I got one. Guys, I never have one. I don't know where you find them. Oh, you just you, you, says the gal who runs social media social for the media, weather channel. Kidding. I know it. What? <laughs> Where do you find them? I find fools. I find fools. Not necessarily weather fools. Actually, there was one 
I don't, I, I'm going to have to save it for next time, which is kind of wild and crazy. And we were talking about it last episode too. And it's like, it shows um, someone not scraping the ice and snow off the top of their car and it's slamming into the car behind it and like breaking their windshield. Oh, oh yeah. That'd be good. Oh wow. Phil's yeah. coming back. We lost wow. him. But... Yeah. So yeah. So bring that one up for next time. That'll work. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm, I'm excited that we have, we have storm wranglers next time. I'm pumped. Yes. No, no. Storm Wranglers is awesome. He's got a very interesting background. So do you have a weather fool, Maz? I do not. All right. So it's MJ and me. Um, I kicked myself out there, by the way. That was my own fault. That was easier. Self-inflicted. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Weather resources. Maz, you're running that. Okay. Who's got one? I got one. Have we done the drought monitor? I've got one. Just the basic drought monitor? Let's do that. Sounds exciting. Phil, the dust. Did you say, Phil, you do have one or do you? <laughs> yes, I do have one. Sorry, Jim. Okay. The drought monitor is exciting only because the drought is improving. <laughs> the drought monitor. Okay. No, that's well, that's good. That's a good thing. No, oh, but it's, does shit. that mean, it's still Jim, you one. do not I have one? Not do that. No, I do have one. No, I'm, I'm going to do the drought monitor. No, you don't understand. Us meteorologists, like at the Weather Channel, there's several because we got to make graphics for it. So we're like, when does it come out? When does it come out? Every single week, when does it come out? And it's... Well, good. I'm, I'm glad some segment gets excited about that. That's always a good thing. <laughs> and I do believe it is we meteorologists. We. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. So, Phil, yeah, I'm Phil, are, you gonna, Phil are you going to share a screen for your weather pool or not? I, I'm going to try. You know, last, e- last episode, I thought I was sharing the screen, and I wasn't. I didn't realize that. Okay. Because um, I'll and, share mine. Yeah, I was just mine. kidding. It's pretty visual. But, yeah, I will. I will share a screen. <laughs> So Maz, uh, you got. So yeah. who's got weather fools? Phil, Mark, MJ, MJ, Phil, and Jen. You do right. Yes. Well, I don't have the link, resource. So I'm sorry, WX week. resource. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I messed that up. You? Resource. Maz resource. is the WX resource guy. Yeah, yeah. There's and no then we'll do that. listener comments. Uh, MJ's okay. got a couple listener yeah. comments, and then I'll close up. Sweet. And cool. we'll get out of here. All right. Oh, and then right. if. And then if Maz, well, I don't know if maybe you won't be able to, cause you don't have your computer to do the Google hangout thing. We'll see. I know oh, Jen, yeah, you gotta go, I but won't. it's back to me and you. Jen's got to go to sleep. Yep. She got yeah. to sleep. The beauty rest. Yeah. <laughs> she is asleep, isn't she? Uh, I don't know if she, she probably is. Oh, we'll put her to sleep. We'll put her to sleep. All right, let's get this ball rolling. Let's do it. <laughs> All that water she's drinking. Oh my god! I know. I I started drinking the Lacroix, man. As you can't see it. Mm. You're not wearing you're a diaper. Up at like are you? Two a.m. <laughs> I am wearing a diaper. <laughs> you gotta get the diaper on. No, it's not a bad idea. Not that you there's know, anything wrong with that. A couple hours. Yeah, we're sitting here for a couple hours. That might not be a bad idea. To yeah. invest in a diaper. Smart. Stormfront. All diaper. right. Here you go. Oh, we could put a logo on it. That would be. <laughs> storm chasing like you really monitor how much you drink and so like in case you want to listen to this two hour podcast at all at once but seriously but anyway yeah Mm. (laughs) you folks watching the raw video you get this oh no all I'm going to see is a diaper with the logo on the That's awesome. Yes. Will it it be the black tornado or the white tornado? Oh, don't go there. Don't go there. Inside joke. Sorry. Oh, Oh, All right. Go ahead. I'm ready. Okay. (laughs) You sure? All right. Here here we go. I'm not. (laughs) I'm not. Okay. Here we go. (laughs) Three, two, one. All right, welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and lead us through our weather fools. Um, MJ, why don't you start us off? What do you got? Oh, okay. I'm going to try to oh, share sorry. the screen. Nope, yeah. I'm ready. You I'm know, ready. I should introduce that. I'm not used to doing that. Brady usually does that, and I think he he's skipping for the Star Wars movie tonight. I don't know. But uh, so our weather fools, this is an opportunity for us to share and throw somebody or a group of people under the bus that in a weather situation are just making dumb, bad decisions or just doing some really stupid crap uh, when it comes to weather. So, MJ, what do you got? Oh, I see it. Oh, 
Okay, good. So you, you see it on there. Yeah. I, um, uh, this was fairly recently in, in November. Um, and, uh, this was in the UK and it was a breakfast weatherman makes a gaff as he forecasts a snowstorm heading to Cornwall. And for those of you who are watching the video, you can see that he's pointing at, uh, a area of cloudiness or fog that has a certain phallic, uh, shape to it that's and, uh, fog that white that white that's, well it's a, oh sorry i'm sorry it's a snowstorm sorry it's a snowstorm making its way across southern uh uh that's great britain so that's a big yeah and snowstorm right there it, 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 it is it is and uh wow. he, he <laughs> caught some flack on social media as you can imagine uh for that yeah. if he was pointing it out or or did he mention that it looked phallic i don't believe it? i don't believe see i don't there's not video for it, it's just the picture i don't right. believe he even said anything about it so i'm either he didn't realize it or he purposefully didn't say anything about it uh but you can certainly see it you know so. it's funny like it's just making a comment about this when i used to be an on-camera meteorologist making my own graphics there were a couple times where before we went on air you know one of my coworkers would be like Jen, do you know what that looks like? And I'm a like, good point. I'll just do a little <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. There, there was uh there was a situation. I know a, few, a number of episodes back, one of our weather fools was a similar situation, but it was a funnel cloud that oh. looked phallic, uh-huh. and that that as well was pointed out uh, to people. So, <laughs> yeah. It, it happens. Uh, I've got a weather fool as well. And, and this, uh, what recently is very recent here, a winter storm that went through Oregon and Portland. And it reminded me a little bit, though not nearly as severe as, as the storm that went through Atlanta a few years back, where just, you know, an inch um, kind of shut the whole city down. But uh, th- this was from the usnews.com talking a little bit about uh, in Portland, the snow that they were getting. You know, in the picture shows someone riding a bike uh, along with the tra- a bicycle. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, not a motorbike, but a bicycle along with traffic. Uh, but they basically talked about how the, it basically shut the city down. Everything was shut down uh, because of the snow it was coming. And I'm, again, it's a situation where this stuff was forecasted. They said people were trying to get out of work early to try and beat the traffic. And, of course, that didn't work because everybody was trying to get out of work early. And everybody was driving and everybody drove. Nobody prepared with advance warning Mm. that a winter storm warning, uh, mind you, was already forecasted to be coming. Yet everybody drove to work like normal, knowing this was probably going to happen during the day. Just nobody uh, at all preparing for this. So. You know, it it doesn't blanket everybody being a weather fool that that lives in a city like that and just didn't plan. But just in general, the the lack of planning in advance that people will make, thinking that it won't affect them, and then all they do is when it does finally affect them is kind of bitch and complain about it. And I mean, people were stuck in traffic for hours. School buses stuck in traffic for hours, uh, very similar to uh, Atlanta a few years ago. So that. Uh, that is my weather fool is some of the people in Portland and the general public. And yeah. Phil's views do not necessarily express the views of Stormfront Freaks, and we love the people oh, of in Portland. Of course not. Yeah. Well, I think it's yes, hard sometimes <laughs> for people to break their normal routine. They just don't want to do it, and I think that's part of the problem until it's really bad or they see it happening. Get reports. You're, yeah, and that's it. I, yeah, and it's just lack of preparation. You're exactly right. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll we'll post those on stormfrontfreaks.com on our website uh, within the show notes. So if you want to actually go to those links, you'll see that. Uh, let's talk about our WX resources, Maz. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Phil. So weather resources, these are the places you can go to check out the new apps, the new just cool weather stuff that maybe you haven't seen before. So when we point it out, everybody goes to it, and they're, all the people on those sites are happy because they're like, hey, we got like 10,000 more people, right? That's assuming we have 10,000. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. <clears throat> exactly. So to kick us off, let's go with ladies first. MJ, go ahead. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much, Maz. <laughs> I always appreciate that. Beauty before <laughs> age. All right. Um, oh. hey, my, uh, my weather resource is, uh, I'm, I'm trying, it's kind of pertinent, I think, considering the grips of the polar vortex that so many people are in right now. 
um, and the low temperatures that we're experiencing around this time, or at least in, at the time that we're recording. The, the Centers for Disease Control of all places um, has a natural disasters and severe weather uh, section to their website. Uh, and they have a winter, winter weather uh, guide um, and some other winter weather information. And I think, you know, as I looked over it, I thought this is actually really good stuff, especially for those people that aren't used to it. And, and we're having, you know, we've, we've seen some of that this year and, and, you know, very likely we'll see more of that uh, later on as the year. So, um, you know, I'll make sure we get the link to that posted and people can take a look at that and share that out to others because I really think they do a very, very good job um, of talking about all kinds of things from hypothermia to frostbite to uh, preparing before a storm, what to do during a storm, after it, and so on. So uh, a very good that's, website for... Uh, that's the, Lord that knows no one's going to read that. Pardon? How to prepare. How to prepare. Uh, yeah. You know. Good it's resource. Cool, but maybe they've, cool. been, they've been maybe maybe they've been through one now and they go, hey, maybe I ought to that's take true. a look for next time. All right. That's there you a go. positive way to look huh. at it. Good point. And you were saying that's the CDC, right? CDC, yep. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, Jen. All right, guys. Oh, this is got? really exciting. Every Thursday morning, I chomp at the bit because I cannot wait for this to come out. And it is the weekly U.S. drought monitor. Probably one of the most Whoa. exciting things that can happen to a meteorologist awesome. every week. And it, it comes out every Thursday morning. And it, it basically has a really deep analysis of, you know, the different uh, drought sections and um, or areas and what's going on there and compares it to the week before. There's lots of different things you can do there. And, you know, we, the Southeast has been in a, a pretty bad drought. We call it the Desert Southeast um, on the Weather Channel. And we're finally seeing some improvement, but this is a really good tool we use to understand the, the scope of the drought, you know, how it gradually got worse over the past several months, and hopefully it's now continuing to improve. But it's a really good resource, and I love it. So are you, cool. every well, Thursday are- morning, when you're chomping at the bit, are you wearing your Stormfront Freaks diaper then to work every Thursday morning? <laughs> I'm not sure, man. I'm in like a whole body suit of Stormfront Freaks, and I'm just like... Guys, I don't know what to do. I'm about to lose it. And then it comes out and I'm, you know, I, just, <laughs> oh, I don't know how to handle myself, you know. I'm just, wait, you know, out, we're out out watching out. paint dry. You know? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we are. Yeah. <laughs> I like to be I like to be a little more positive, Jan, and watch the monsoon report, just saying. But anyway. Yeah. All right. So um, who do we got left? Oh, hey, Phil, you're last but not least, right? Yeah. All right. So my, my WX resource actually ties in a little bit to my weather fools. So here's, so here's uh, people in Portland, everybody's getting out of work because it's uh, a winter storm warning, which they knew about in advance. And yet everybody's getting stuck on the same flipping road. Uh, my WX resource is an app called Waze, W-A-Z-E. Uh, it is, I've been on this sucker for a few years now. I think it was recently purchased by Google, but it's basically a free GPS app. And what's great about it is every user can input information about traffic and is traffic really bad right now. So it will give you real time information, uh, not only of where the police are, which is really one of the things I like most about it, but those of you that are in a city where there's been a pre-forecasted storm and you're still all trying to leave work at the same time in your vehicles because you didn't prepare, get out your Waze app on your Android or iPhone, and it will tell you don't go this way because traffic is really bad and route you around a different direction. It's actually really fun on road trips, too, when you're not driving. So (laughs) When she's not texting. I know what I'm not texting. No, it's fun because you can like name your car and stuff like that. That's like you can do fun. fun like things with it. And then you pass people yeah, and you're right. like, hey, that's like, you know, I don't know, so and so. That's Bud. That's Bill. Perfect for stock and you can also not get stuck in traffic for multiple, multiple hours because you took the same route you take every day after work. But True. there's a snowstorm and there's an avalanche and that road is blocked. Uh, go a different route. Uh, I know, I, I, I no, it really, it really happened in Portland. That's why one of the major highways was uh, blocked off. 
Yeah, people oh, still kept just anymore. taking that route and backing up further and further. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll we post all those on our show notes, uh, stormfrontfreaks.com. And I said it wasn't everybody, right? <laughs> you know who you are, listeners. You know who you are. <laughs> if it wasn't you, don't don't worry about it, right? Not all right, so, so uh, we'll post all that stuff, show notes, stormfrontfreaks.com. MJ, we have any listener comments or responses? We've got a couple um, at uh, DDWX um, uh, mentioned on Twitter, uh, shared out to, to a number of their followers that they can now follow Stormfront Freaks. So Ooh. it was a nice, uh, nice plug from oh, wow. from uh, Daniel. Nice. Uh, and then I think Phil was uh, having a conversation with Ryan Davidson um, about uh, our guest, Tom Nizzle. Uh, kind of wanting to warn him, uh, having Ryan warn him about uh, our show since Ryan had been a guest uh, before. <laughs> and uh, R- Ryan made a nice comment about uh, Stormfront Freaks being a circus train wreck and so much fun. So uh, we're we're happy for Ryan to uh, well, give us it, a little it, shout You missed out. part of that because he said w, okay, yeah. uh, WUTV, so Weather Underground that he, he produces. It is a train wreck, yeah. Is a train wreck. And then he said, but Stormfront Freaks is a circus train wreck. And right. then, of course, he added, added the smiley face at the end, so everything's okay. Everything's winky smiley, smiley face. face. And, and yeah. I'll say this on, on the previous house. tweet. <laughs> on the previous tweet you mentioned, uh, yeah. where someone said you can now follow, follow Stormfront us. Freaks or something. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that came because there was a, I think it was a TV meteorologist that mentioned um, Stormfront not being a real name of a weather phenomenon he said there's cold front and there's storm system oh, sure and, and so that probably didn't show up there but uh and so that person said well you, you know you can follow Stormfront freaks uh podcast and then i uh, there was a comment from us saying something like you know cold front freaks or storm system freaks just didn't have the same ring to it ah right um, so plus so we had already we had already printed all our diapers, so it didn't matter. Right, right. <laughs> so either you have to take over doing the listener comment it's segment, not, or I have sorry. to watch our social media better. Well, <laughs> probably, pro- probably I need to give you better information, uh, <laughs> and you can watch more too. But all right, so that does it for this episode of Stormfront Freaks Podcast. Uh, thank you for listening. I'll tell you, if you like the show, tell your friends, and take two minutes to leave us a review on iTunes. And if you didn't like the show, uh, tell us. Uh, We love hearing from you, and all our numbers uh, keep going up like crazy every episode. So we want to hear from all of you. Let us know. Special thanks to our guest, Dr. Elizabeth Austin. And our next episode in two weeks, uh, which will start off Season 2.0 with a bang, we have Kelly Williamson, uh, Storm Chaser and star of the Weather Channel Storm Wranglers, is actually going to be our guest in two weeks. Awesome. And listen to this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Our 2017 lineup. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. It's it's already scheduled to include former Weather Channel meteorologist Kim Cunningham, social scientist Dr. Laura Myers, and then check out our, our chase season guests that we have coming up for the chase season. We've got Chris Sanner of Tornado Titans, Corey Hartman of Severe Studios, Gabe Garfield of Behind the Storms, and Reed Timmer of AccuWeather. Uh, all going to be coming on uh, here coming up in 2017. So uh, guys, we're, we're trying to make it even better and better. We we know it always has to do with the guests. Uh, Lord knows that. So we keep trying to get uh, the best (laughs) guests in here for you guys. And we want to answer your questions or discuss your comments on future shows. So send us your thoughts to questions at stormfrontfreaks.com or send a message on Twitter or Facebook, uh, Tell us who you'd like us to have on the show or any fun topics you'd like us to discuss. Give us a heads up, and uh, MJ will share that on future shows as well. So for MJ, Maz, and Jen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Bill Murray. uh, (laughs) From Groundhog Day or Bill Murray? Yes. No, no, from Yeah, but we'll have to record it in the summer. Just saying. Okay, so, you know. Uh, Fair enough. Fair enough. So for MJ, Maz, and Jen, I'm going to go ahead and signal the all clear, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. All right. Cool. Woo. Good job, guys. Thank you.